Hello YouTube, it is me Raina and I am back. So if you haven't heard, the L Word Gen Q has been cancelled. Um, so it's going to only have three seasons. I am not surprised. If you see my previous video about the show, you can you can possibly see why it was canceled at the end of the day. The ratings were not good. Um, and we and Paramount, excuse me, Showtime is currently going through this change, being um, gobbled up by Paramount. They're going to merge. There's a lot of merging going on with these streaming services. So, but even if that was not the case, the show itself was not being received well. There was no excitement for this season because, you know, the people, you know, heard rumors, certain characters left that were popular and certain, you know, relationships were broken up because of that. And it was just a whole mess. Um, this season of the L Word and Q was just not satisfying anybody. And it's, it's sad, but once again, like I said, it's not surprising. And it's sad because there was a lot of potential here. Like when this show was first announced a couple of years ago, I was excited. Um, you know, I was a fan of the original show when I was younger in my teen years, you know, discovering, you know, who I was and, to get it now in a different stage of my life, it would have been very interesting to kind of compare and contrast and to look back and, and look forward. And, you know, it's sad how they really underutilize the new actors and people have their own taste and people have their own thing of like, oh, what went wrong with the original, with, with this show? Um, I believe it was the show running and the writing, the writing really let, a, and the storytelling let a lot of, especially the newer characters down by a lot, especially in season three. I mean, people can talk about the acting all they want to. How are you going to get better actors if you don't have good writing? Like if you're in the same storyline every single episode, or if you're doing the same thing over, like what can you get from that? Like, of course they're going to, be, you know, bored or, you know, be uninspired because you're doing the same thing every single episode or it are not even doing the same thing, but getting whiplash in one episode, you're doing this and the other episode, you're doing that. It's like, how did I get from A to B from episode three to episode four? Like it's, it, it's too, it's too much of a jump and like, it's not consistent. And it's like, even if you do have a consistent storyline, it's like, wait, how did I get from here? How did I, how, how was I this in episode two and this in episode eight? Like, where was the middle here? Like, you know, it was just, and watching it, you can see that too. And it's like, well, if we're, if we can't keep track and we're watching the show, how do we set the actors to keep track with the really bad writing and storytelling? I blame this fully on the showrunner and fully on the writing team. They failed these actors old and new. Um, and it really reared its ugly head in season three. Like I saw bits of it in season one and I thought they could save it. But then season two, I was like, mm, I don't know. I don't trust it. Once they broke up the friendship between the new characters with having, you know, Danny's girlfriend cheat on her with the other friend, I didn't trust it. That made me kind of not trust them to have consistent relationships, whether they be platonic or romantic. And even though the character that everyone loves, Gigi, came into season two, and yes, I love the character too, I was resistant to get um, to get kind of involved and to care because I had a feeling that, that that character, not only the relationship between her and Danny would not last, but that character would not, you know, would not kind of be there, if that makes any sense. And the fact that season three proved me right, I hate that. Um, and the fact that the show let a talent like the actress who played Gigi go, I just can't. And the way they just demolished the character of Danny. I feel like the character of Danny, who was the new um, Gen Q character, was like the, the character that we're supposed to follow for the newer characters. And they just demolished her. Oh my God. Like it was just so hard to watch. And Sophie and Finley kind of came out better, but their storyline was, you know, going around and, and poor Micah, like I was saying, like stuck in that same storyline with his girlfriend. It was just so bad. And then the um, older characters were stuck. It, it was, everybody was stuck. 
no movement, no development, just stuck, you know, and Bet and Tina showed up here and there and be like, hey, we're getting married, and they got married, and it's like, okay, you know, like, it, it just felt like, oh, let's get this over with, please, and, you know, if you heard, you know, Leisha Haley and Kate Manning, they have a podcast called Pants, and these, you know, last, you know, couple episodes, they really kind of, you know, <laughs> let their feelings be heard, so, yeah, it's not surprising. Um, so, and the old article also, they talk about doing an L word, New York, that's being developed at Showtime. That's going to have the original show on Eileen Shaken. Now, even though I do favor the original show over this one, that show was not perfect neither. It's far from perfect. And yes, it's dated, but it's far from perfect. And we know how season six went. So, you know, hopefully, you know, if she does do this, she learns from her mistakes. Um, but when it comes to relationships, I think that Eileen Shaken is way better at that, whether it be platonic or romantic, way better than Gen Q ever was. Um, so yeah, what are your thoughts on this? Leave your comments down below and bye YouTube.